Welcome to Mile Marker, a Mississippi Roads podcast. I'm Walt Grayson. In this episode, we head to Horned Lake to the Museum for the American Contract Bridge League. Tracy Yarbrough is the curator, and she tells us more about the museum. And we hear from bridge players and museum patrons Diane Petrov from New York and John Carruthers from Canada. The ACBL is the governing body of duplicate tournament bridge. We sanction clubs and games and tournaments and teachers and directors. We're here in our museum in Horn Lake, Mississippi. The museum opened in June of 2010. We've been here almost nine years. We moved here from a building in Memphis that we had been in since 1972. It's a self-guided tour. We've got a lot of interactive displays, lots of video footage. You could take 10 hours to get through just half of what's here or five minutes just to go, okay. Just depends. You get out of it what you put into it. The ACBL Museum basically takes you on a journey from when bridge became popular and how it's evolved today. We specialize really in competitive bridge, but there's still millions of social bridge players out there in the world. Tournament bridge is a lot different. It's a sport. It's got rules that you have to follow when you play. So there's no deviation from those rules without penalties and everything else like any other sporting event. I started playing bridge at college in Bulgaria when I was attending the University of Sofia. Then uh, back in 2005, I rejoined the game and uh, joined the ACBL. And uh, I started playing and actually started playing competitively. I started attending the tournaments. This is the game which uh, once you start playing, probably it will be for life. So sooner or later, even you stop, you'll be back in the game. I've been an ACBL member since the early 70s. And I've known about the museum since it started, so it's been 10 years. But the Hall of Fame, uh, which I'm more interested in, has been uh, in existence for many decades. So a trump indicator is not really anything you would see in bridge today. It was a little tabletop gadget that had all the suit symbols on it and some way to mark which suit was Trump. They're the most amazing little things. They're cats and Mickey Mouse. It's a neat little collection. You could look at it for a long time. Joan had been collecting these little items for about 40 years and was looking to move to Florida and downsize. And she wanted her precious babies to have a nice home. So we set up a foundation, accepted her collection, and it was kind of the cornerstone of building a museum when we moved to our new building. One of the most amazing things we have is our trophy collection, and they all go back to, you know, National Bridge events have been played since the 30s, and so all these amazing, gorgeous, gigantic silver trophies have been donated by players or in memory of other players, you know, over the last 80 years. And it's something to behold. It takes up a whole wall of the museum. Certainly during the Depression, bridge really took off. It didn't cost anything to sit around with all your neighbors and play a card game. And so it really got popular then. Throughout the 40s, it got even more popular. And in the 50s is when you start seeing it on television. And it's like today, even a lot of our Hall of Fame members will tell you that they first got interested in the game because they saw a championship bridge with Charles Gorin on TV. Mr. Gorin was probably the uh, biggest, most well-known promoter of bridge. He was Mr. Bridge, as they called him. We're definitely not still in the heyday of bridge, although the game is classic and will always be a great game. It's harder with technology and everything to get people to come out and actually be social in real life. The uh, ACBL currently has about 150,000 members, and that's down from about 160,000. In most European countries, the Netherlands, France, and some Asian countries, Indonesia and China, Bridge is on the upswing. In North America, in Canada and the U.S., there's been a bit of a downswing. 
Part of the reason for that is we're aging. The average age of our members is still pretty old, too old in my opinion. And for the game to uh, survive, we do need to get more young players into the game. There's no question of that. For bridge, all you need is a pack of cards and four players and a table. It's not very complicated. You can teach someone the rudiments of bridge in 10 minutes, but it takes a lifetime to become truly accomplished, and I haven't yet. I'm still hoping. The museum exceeded my expectation. It was so interesting. The videos which are here, the trophies, the whole experience just is amazing. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Mile Marker, and special thanks to our guests Tracy Yarborough, Diane Petroff, and John Carruthers. Find full broadcast episodes of Mississippi Roads on YouTube TV and the MPB Public Media app, as well as mpbonline.org. House of Cards was produced by Ron Rodenmeyer. Mile Marker and Mississippi Roads is executive produced by Katie Savage and a product of Mississippi Public Broadcasting.